Let's start actually with that special election that we had in Ohio. What do you make of it right now? I mean, it's within 1,700 votes. It looks like the Republican will hold it. Well, uh, you know, it's still considered too close to call. Uh, there's not an official call there yet because there's still provisional ballots that are out. Uh, very close. Uh, Democrats uh, are, I think, you know, we have every reason to feel great heading into November. And I say that because this was a district that Trump won very, very easily. In fact, this is the kind of district that, that uh, pundits like to point out is Trump's strong suit. Uh, I think it's a plus 11 Republican district. And here we are with a race that is still close, too close to call uh, within one percentage point. Uh, so it just shows that there's a tremendous amount of enthusiasm for Democrats going into November. I think it also shows that, that the American people, whether they're in Ohio or they're in Texas, here in my home state or somewhere else, they want accountability. Uh, we have another example this morning, Representative Chris Collins, of uh, the tremendous amount of lack of accountability that is happening in Washington, D.C., uh, because it's under total Republican control. And I believe that what we saw in Ohio's 12th district last night was uh, that folks are going to want to put some of those checks and balances back into place in November. So, Mr. Secretary, enthusiasm is a great thing, but enthusiasm is not worth very much unless it's directed in some particular direction. Uh, it's, is it enough for the Democrats to be against Donald Trump? Do they need to be for something? And what should they be for as we look forward, not just to this election, but that matter? to 2020. Well, I wouldn't say that they're just, Democrats are not just against something. What we're for is accountability in government. And what we see is this culture of corruption in Washington, D.C. Well, what we see is the president uh, acting erratically, whether it's with North Korea or with uh, tariffs that have been imposed that y'all were just reporting on. Uh, so what Democrats stand for is a blueprint for success in the 21st century that includes everybody, uh, that means that uh, we engage in trade agreements that are good for American workers, but also recognize that we do have a 21st century global economy. We stand for extending opportunity to everybody in this country, not just uh, you know, picking and choosing mm. who we like and don't like. Uh, that's what Democrats stand for, a 21st blue century blueprint for progress. You speak of uh, Congressman Chris Collins. Will his arrest give a new opening for the Democrats in that district? Well, it's just one more example. Uh, I think in that district, of course, it, it's going to be going to get very interesting now. Now, we don't know yet what's going to happen. Uh, you know, this is just at the beginning of, of a, a criminal uh, process. Uh, so you can't jump the gun. Uh, however, I do think that, um, you know, it, it, there's, a, there's a good opportunity there to the extent that there's an opening, there's a change. Um, so whether it's mm -hmm. there, though, or in any of these other swing districts, you know, the Democrats need 24 uh, to take back the House. This is just one more example of the culture of corruption that has, has enveloped Washington, D.C. during the Trump administration and with total Republican control. Uh, people have heard, of course, that absolute power corrupts absolutely. And the Republicans have been controlling everything in Washington, D.C. for the last couple of years. And this is what it's gotten us. And people want to change from that. Also in New York, you have uh, Democratic candidates like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, are Democrats like her, very far progressives, a vulnerability in middle America come November? I don't think so. Uh, first of all, I think that there's room in the Democratic Party for folks that have different beliefs uh, how we, we should approach, whether it's um, uh, trade or uh, paying for college or a number of things. Uh, I think that what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has done is tremendous. She's going to be a great representative for her district. I think she also has a voice that should be amplified. And, and to answer your question about other places in the country, are there other places that are not as progressive as the Bronx? Of course there are. But I think that what people are looking for first and foremost uh, 
in candidates that run for office, even if they disagree with you in one or two things or a few things, what they want to know is, number one, that you're being honest with them, that you're being authentic to who you are, and that you're going to do what you say you're going to do and do it in a trustworthy way. So um, I don't think that folks should shy away, Democrats should shy away from standing up for what they believe in. Uh, Mr. Secretary, in talking about what you believe in, it's also important what you don't believe in. You have to define yourself somehow. I understand you have a political action committee called Opportunity First, and you will be endorsing 64 candidates, not just for federal office, but I understand state and local office as well. There are hundreds, literally hundreds you could have endorsed. How do you pick the ones you're going to back as opposed to the ones you won't? Yeah, so uh, my effort, Opportunity First, is particularly focused on young progressive Democrats. Uh, and the first priority are folks that are running in one of these uh, congressional districts that Democrats need to take back the House. And then after that, helping to build up a bench of folks that are running for state assembly or for city council that are going to be tremendous representatives for their community today. And then in five years, 10 years, they may be the mayor of a city or they may be the state senator or a governor. Uh, so uh, we went through a whole process of looking at some of the, the best and the brightest uh, young progressive Democrats that are out there uh, and folks that we think um, can make a big impact in their community and in the case of these folks running for Congress have a good shot of winning their election. Uh, and so we're going to release, we just released that na the names today of those uh, 64 folks. Some progressive Democrats have also talked about impeaching the president, abolishing ICE. Should these very divisive issues be brought forth in terms of strategy for the Democrats? Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, there is value in um, whether it's talking about the president's uh, corruption or all of the terrible practices that ICE has engaged in. Um, I know that it's a political reality that things get reduced to a slogan. Uh, however, what these folks are doing, who are criticizing ICE or who are criticizing the president, is bringing up legitimate points that the American people and the constituents in these districts ought to consider. Uh, how that's weaponized in different candidates' campaigns and so forth, you know, I'm going to choose to focus on. Um, is there a legitimate beef that people should have with President Trump? Yes, there is. There's plenty of evidence that this is the most corrupt administration in a long time. And is there a legitimate beef with ICE? Should it somehow be reconstituted? Yeah, I believe that it should. As somebody that used to run a federal department, I know very well that these types of divisions are reconstituted all the time. And 19 different employees from within ICE 19 employees from within ICE said that, that ICE should be reconstituted somehow because it's not being effective uh, at addressing more serious crimes. That's an alarm bell. You know, when have you heard 19 employees of any other division of the federal government come forward themselves and say that a change needs to be made? So, yeah, these are legitimate issues. Yeah, Mr. Secretary, uh, you not only support other candidates, but you are thought to be per perhaps a candidate next time around in 2020. You were talked about as a vice presidential candidate last time. As a potential candidate, a potential candidate, I say, do you favor abolishing ICE? Uh, I understand uh, yeah, different uh, candidates uh, take uh, different positions, but what's your position? Yeah, my position is that that division should be reconstituted. Um, uh, 19 employees of the Homeland Security Investigations Unit of ICE, so these are ICE employees, said very specifically that ICE is failing at actually going after more serious crimes because of the way that it's set up right now. Now, does that, my, does that mean that I believe that we shouldn't have enforcement? No. It means that I believe if we want stronger enforcement, if we want better enforcement, that doesn't mean that we have it set up the way that ICE is set up right now. And folks should remember that ICE is a very new division in the federal government. It was only, it only was created in 2003. Uh, we need to go back to a more effective model uh, of enforcement mm. and of addressing these issues. And ICE is just not the way to do it. So when will you be announcing your decision on 2020? So I'm going to make a decision uh, after November and before the end of the year, and then I'll make an announcement uh, shortly after that. Mm. Uh, you know, so I, I've spent a lot of time um, talking to folks around the country. I've had a chance to travel and support different candidates. Uh, I'm going to get out to Iowa in uh, a week or so 
getting out to Nevada tomorrow. Right. Uh, so I'm getting a sense of, of where our country is. Um, but whether I get into the presidential race or not, what I believe that people want is uh, a swift departure from the road that we're going down now. Uh, I think people want something different from President Trump, uh, and we're going to see that in these midterms. I think Democrats are going to take back the House, they may take back the Senate, and they're going to send a, a very strong message to this president that there needs to be more accountability, more honesty and integrity, and more of an effort to try and bring people together instead of tearing them apart.